and to the village. Okay. Something I'd say is worth wondering about, Rosmarine. A flock lost his eye, wouldn't you say? Well, I've always wondered about that. Suppose he must have gotten injured, or... Could have been a branch, or... Might have fallen, perhaps. He doesn't seem he's in pain, at least. Oh, hey, I wish I could talk to him. I have so many questions. Such as... Hey, he followed me, firstly. Your hat's made of hay, that's my best guess. Oh, and I'd ask him his name, too. Isn't it Flock? I was the one who thought of that. It's not really his name. He is a goat, Rosamarine. Why, but he still has his own character release. We're done wondering about useless things, Rosamarine. Oh, but it's so much fun, isn't it? up here. Oh, there's so many crows. What, is this? what are these crows doing here? Right, Elise? Elise, is everything alright? This can't be good. I'd best hurry. Hey, Orza Marine, you know how to sew, don't you? Somewhat, yes. That explains it, I suppose. Explains what? Are the patches on your dress are so clumsy. You could ask Miss Marielle to help you, you know. Oh, but I quite like my dresses. That's alright, but I'd say you deserve better. Newer clothes is all. I don't need better release. This is my dress. It's been with me for years now. All these patches and tears mean something to me, you see. What does that moon-shaped one mean, then? Ah, this is from an old blanket of mine. It brings me comfort to have it with me. Wherever I go. And the squares? Granny patched it for me when I fell off a tree. I can't bring myself to part with it now that she's gone. Fine, you have your reasons. I appreciate the thought, Elise. Eh, I can't go in there. Being in the forest. A lot of crows. Oh, there's something up there. Hmm. Ah, acorn. Another acorn. Oh, there you are. Flip Kitchen asked me to warn you two. What happened, Granny Gretel? My poor Apfel struck a dreadful fever. Flip Kitchen and Elizabeth were up all night looking after him. Is he alright? Seems so, but after that high of a fever. 
I wouldn't want him frolicking about too much. Or does he know Granny Gretel? In church, I believe. Sepkuchin said Father Hands intends to keep watch over him today. Father Hands? Oh, it's one thing after another here in Kieferberg, isn't it? Let's sell the... first. all this. I don't think I've ever seen so many crows at once. Come, Rosemary, we must find out what's going on. This is the Rosemarine I know, there's no doubt. I don't know what to make of last night's Rosemarine, though. be scraping bird poop off the roost for weeks, Elma. Oh, Elise, would you take a look at all this nonsense? These crows, I see. All of Kieferberg is thick with the filthy things. I told everyone I'd seen them yesterday, Miss Elma. They're a pest, and Lord knows where they've come from. Oh, but they're not dangerous, I'm certain. What are you saying, lass? Of course they are. You'd best talk some sense into your cousin, Elise. It's clearly not all there, the poor lass. All right, let's go, Rosamarine. Ah, yes. Hmm. Oh, the back areas. Ah. They best go lend the lads a hand, Brunhild. No, Guido, please don't go. What's going on here? You don't mean to say you haven't seen them, do you? I've seen them before anyone else in Kieferberg, you know. My, you ought to know something about this, then. Oh, please stop with that nonsense, Miss Wilma. Those rich of things broke into the windmill, Elise. That's why I'd best head back there, Brunhild. She's pregnant, Guido. Don't let her get worked up. They broke into the windmill, Mr. Guido? All our grain, the bastards. I must go, Brunhild. I can't stay in here all day. Oh, Guido, what if they attack me while you're away? Huh? Miss Oddly? Eek! Don't tell me you're hiding from the crows. I'm not going anywhere near those dreadful things. But this is all your fault. How is this our fault, Miss Godly? You are hiding something, I know it. Old Draken's been taking for a fool, but I know you. Is this because of what I said yesterday, Miss Oddly? All these awful goings on. I understand it's frightening, Miss Oddly, but you can't. Oh, but these crows weren't enough. Even our children are hexed now. What are you? Shoo, shoo, leave me be, you. What are you sweating about it, Jacob? It's a no. But Granny, what's wrong, Miss Marilyn? That foul lass, he came down with a fever last night. I've heard, yes. Do you know if he's feeling better, Miss Marilyn? He is. It seems the fever has gone in the morning, but... Lipkitchen said the poor lad was delirious. 
Oh, please let me go see him, Granny. Absolutely not, Jacob, and that's final. Where is he right now, Miss Merlin? In the church, I've heard. Oh, I could go wait for him by the fountain. Wait for your father to come back, Jacob. I wouldn't want you at these birds' mercies, either. But Granny, this also goes for you two. Don't go near those crows, you hear? Oh, but have they hurt anyone? Lord knows they could. So I'm supposed to go to the windmill. Oh, it's built up, huh? Many blemish discolored and wrinkled apples await to be fed to livestock. It's coming along, I suppose. Kieferberg's maple leans clumsily to the side, those stripped of its main decorations. Hmm. Any down here? Water looks like it's still there. I should have believed you last night, Elise. I suppose... not that it would have prevented anything, though. But well, the dreadful things are everywhere. You've been circling the windmill all morning, you see. Lads are still up there trying to do away with them. Circling the windmill? What for? But it's still our grain, Elise. Those crows are a bad omen, that's for sure. I wouldn't want to lend old Jockin's notions any weight, but... We should give it some thought, I'd say. Now oh, that's a bad omen. Take good care of it, Father. <sighs> There's nothing to see here, Elise. You'd best head back to town. You were the one who first saw these crows, weren't you, Elise? It's not as though you folks believed me when it mattered. I said it last night, and I'll say it again. You're hiding. It matters not, old Jockin. You must focus on the matter at hand. We all had our fill of trouble last night, didn't we? We don't need any more yelling, that's for certain. <sighs> now, they didn't steal that much grain, folks. How no. much did they steal, Mr. Gustav? About a second total, we got here in time to prevent the worst. Darn birds were building a nest in the oven. We ought to give it a good scrubbing later. It doesn't seem they're keen on attacking us, at least. You've locked it up and trusted Eugene here with the key for now. I appreciate the trust. Of course, especially after all of yesterday's goings-on. Because he was stolen from, or because he has no horses to steal the grain with? Who's to stand guard here, then? Before we get into that, Bernhard, there's something I'd like to say. We're all well aware of what happened last night, however. I have to stick together, folks. Now more than ever. Who heard the man? <laughs> Kiefer Burger is what we make of it. Don't forget that. Mm. I have to head back to the church. Is that whole feeling better, Father? Mm. That's what I'm looking into, Finn. Mm. You best go with Elise. Left Kitchen will fill you in, I'm certain. Will do, Mr. Gustav. I was wondering, Elise. Mr. Bernhardt said the crows were trying to m make a nest in the oven. I suppose it's a cozy little nook. I don't see what's so... Well, there's an oven in the windmill, right? There's always been an oven in the windmill, Rosemarine. What's your... The tender flesh, Elise? Wouldn't this be a good way to prepare it? Making bread out of it, you say? 
Maybe you could ask about town if they'd let you in. That's rather risky, Rosemarine. I suppose, but... I can't think of any other way, either. Not if I want to find him. It's worth a try, I'd say. Alright, I'll see what I can find out. Same, same. I'd say they snuck in through the roof, Gustav. When did you realize the crows were in the windmill, Mr. Ludwig? Henrik came about to collect some flour this morning. He was the one who gave the alert. So you've locked it up, have you? Must keep those birds out, at least, or they'll take all our grain. Maybe if you scattered some grain elsewhere, Mr. Gustav. Then the windmill could still be available, and... We thought about that, Elise. Nobody was in favor of wasting any more grain, lass. Ah, I see. You have to keep a very close eye on the windmill, Elise. You can have a word with Eugen, perhaps. No, of course. Ah, so it's gonna be locked up till I get the key. Your days will come, lad. When I'm settled in Primaldorf, God willing. Don't make hasty decisions, Eugen. What is it, Elise? Hmm... Busted? With the key to the windmill, even. Lass is right, Eugen. It's a shame for you to leave. I think I can do about that, folks. There's nothing left for me here in Kieferberg, you see. So I think everyone would miss you, Mr. Eugene. Please reconsider. No, I've made up my mind, but I do appreciate it, Elise. Even this key, I will only be holding on to it until the evening. Until the evening, Mr. Eugene? Too much responsibility, lass. I'm not too comfortable with it in my pocket, I must admit. Why not send it over to someone else, then? I could take it to Mr. Gustav if you'd like. That's alright, Elise. There's no better place than Kieferberg, lad. I wonder why they're still circling the windmill. It's not because of the grain, that's for certain. Nothing. That fellow's fever was rather serious, it seems. I'd best pay him a visit before I head off to work. Ah, okay. And let's go around this way. Around this way. See what pops up. Any more dialogue here? He's so certain Rosemarine and I are hiding something. And if we spread this about town, or...? Miss Brunhild's rather insecure, isn't she? This is bad. This is very bad. I better figure out why those crows are in Kieferberg and fast. There's... Crows. Actually, do they have anything? Does they leave anything up here? Ah, oh, it's nice to see you, Elise. 
Heard about Apfo, I presume? I only heard he was ill, but that's all. Oh, the poor lad. I can't bear looking at his little hands. How about them, Miss Dorothea? It's best to hear it from me, Elise, so you get the real story. You've been up all night, Elizabeth. You can tell her. That fellow's fine now, as you can see, but last night he... has awoken by him moaning, speaking nonsense. This fever was boiling him alive, I... He called for Father Hands and brought him to the church, but... That fellow had never been so ill. I thought I'd lose him. He wasn't all there either. He kept mumbling to himself, and I... I don't know how, but his hands are injured. It's horrifying. And they were so bloody. As if they were pecked at by something. I can't explain it. Please collect yourself, Miss Elizabeth. That's right, Miss Elizabeth. Take deep breaths. At first I thought he'd caught the goat's sickness somehow, but... It doesn't explain his hands or what happened to my goats. Well, this is my disgrace. It's all right, Miss Elizabeth. We're all here for you. It's all right. You what know, about I... the goats? It must have happened while we were praying for Apfel in church. When Miss Elizabeth went to fetch him dry clothes, she happened upon two of her goats lying on the ground. They bled to death. Their tongues had been ripped out, and their heads were severed, too. Mm. You can rest assured we'll help you, Miss Elizabeth. I shall arrange for a doctor to come as soon as possible. What am I to do with one sick goat, Father? We'll make certain you and the children don't go without, Miss Elizabeth. You're welcome to have supper with Finn and I any time, Elizabeth. Thank you, but I don't have the strength, Dorothea. Hmm. Miss Dorothea will be looking after Apfel, Miss Elizabeth. Best go home and rest for the day. Of course, Father, thank you. Mm. Come, I'll walk with you and Apfo home. I'm sorry, I... This is awful, Elise. Mm. I'll have to pay them a visit later. one thing after another, isn't it? But first things first. I have to figure out how I'm going to get my hands on that key. Oh. You look awful, Upkajin. No wonder, is it? Seeing Apfel so ill has had me worrying about him all night. As Elizabeth said, he was mumbling to himself. He was having convulsions speaking of the witch, too. Sounds like he's been listening to too much of old Jockin's nonsense, that's what. I think so, too. What about Apfel's hands? What was that about? I'd say he did that to himself. He was gripping his fist the entire time, so... Hey, Lipkitchen. If this is about last night, at least... What else would it be about, Lib? I'm worried about you. You gave me a lecture is all. Mr. Gustav was very supportive of me, but Father Hans, he... Oh, that old geezer better not have... Father Hans isn't all there either, Elise. What do you mean he isn't all there? Well, Drakken's very much convinced you saw those crows for a reason, and... Father Hans started to believe him, I think. Well, for goodness sake... Be careful, Elise. There's only so much I can do for you. Here. Oh. Is everything all right, Miss Mario? Oh, at least it's so horrifying. I think this could happen to Elizabeth, of all people. All on her own with two young children, too. Oh, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I haven't seen Grun all morning. I've had a word with Miss Elizabeth early this morning. Grun was in tears. I couldn't bear the sight. 
It seems they're going to be in class with Dorothy and Lepkajin. I'll see what I can do for them this afternoon. Even if it's just keeping them company or entertaining Groon. I can only hope none of this misfortune gets sent my way. Hmm. I haven't had a proper night's sleep since Friday. At least here has been sleeping like an angel, I'd wager. Missing with me first thing in the morning, are you, Miss Bertha? Why, there's hardly a need to threaten folks like that, Elise. How's oh, that a threat, Miss Selma? You can tell us, Elise. There's no harm. Eek, don't say it. You were the only one who knew about these crows. Why is that? There's nothing else I can say. Miss Bertha's... Taking a liking to teasing us, Miss Audley. I suppose. Really, Bertha, this isn't the time. I'm not teasing anyone. This is a legitimate question. It doesn't matter who saw them first, Bertha. What matters is that they're here, and they're not leaving no matter what we do. This is an omen, that's what it is. Come now, Audley. Let's get you home. Okay. Only have... One. Oh, can't Saturday come any sooner? This week has brought us nothing but trouble. These crows all about town, too. We have to have believed you yesterday, Lise. It doesn't matter anymore, Miss Ariani. All that's keeping me in good spirits is the festival, if I'm honest. You've heard about Apto, Elise. Poor boy. I'll ask Miss Lisbeth what I can do for her later. She hasn't had time to look after herself, I wager. Oh, I can't bring myself to smile on days like these. That reminds me, Heinrich is spending the night out there. Because of the crows, isn't it? Together with Eugen, I heard. Our lad hasn't had time to come to terms with what happened yesterday. Eugen will be gone by Sunday, you can mark my words. Miss Wilma. I don't think the fireflies will be out yet. He's not letting go until this evening, but there's nothing more I can do. I suppose I'll try talking to him later. Ah, oh, they moved. I have to have believed you last night, Elise. That's alright, Mr. Gustav. I know it caught folks off guard. I do wonder where these crows came from, though. Hi, ah, Elise. I was hoping to have a word about Lepkachin. You know that last a piece of your very soul, Elise. What do you mean, Mr. Gustav? That poor lad stood up for you against Father Hands and old Jockin all evening. Ah, yes, I know. You'd have been in for a real earful had it not been for her. Lepkachin's a friend to keep, Elise. Don't take her for granted. I don't, Mr. Gustav. Old Jockin, huh? He's been rather vocal about these crows, too. Everything will be fine, folks. You'll see. Ah, there you are, Elise. You seem troubled, Mr. Ludwig. All of Kieferberg is troubled, lass. Now can you do me a favor? Bertha and I are thinking of spending a week in Primaldorf after the festival. In Primaldorf, Mr. Ludwig? My daughter has been insisting we visit, you see. Seeing our grandchildren would be good for Bertha, too. Why don't you visit more often, Mr. Ludwig? Such a long way to Primaldorf. It's really not that far away. 
Do me a favor, will you, Leith? Go ask Finn if he can look after my cabbages while I'm away. Cabbages, Mr. Ludwig? I need daily tending to, and these crows aren't helping. But tell him he can't simply beat them with a hoey here. How would he do such a thing? Young lads are lazy, that's why. Okay, where is he? I only hope he hasn't been spreading anything about town. Ah, oh, so it's like additional dialogue for each one. Dang it. Oh well. That already... Ah, here. I'm struggling, I can't lie. Struggling, Mr. Tristan? Sending all this to Jacob is no easy task, Elise. I've told him as little as I can about the horses, too. But that fool getting the fever is a different story, I understand. These crows are a mystery, too. What did you see yesterday, Elise? Nothing much, Mr. Tristan. There were crows all about Mr. Eugen's horse last evening, that's all. They flew away when I got too close, and then I ran back to town. You have to have believed you, lass. All we can do now is keep our focus on the festival. Easier said than done, if I'm honest. It's one thing after another. I wonder if it will last until Saturday. I do wonder about that. They miss those people. I wouldn't say that's what lazy folks would do, but... Huh. Maybe I'll splurge a little this time. A pile of wooden boxes, barrels, and materials assembled into a festival stall. Ah. Hey, Mr. Flynn. I was talking to Mr. Ludwig again. Not the cabbages, huh? He asked you to ask me to look after his cabbages? I know all about it, lass. He's losing his mind. What? Edmund is obsessed with his cabbages. He's been hounding me about them since yesterday. Well, all right. But what do I tell him, Mr. Finn? I'll do it. I'll do it. Whatever it takes to stop hearing about these wretched cabbages. Ah, there's something on there. You bring good news, I'm certain. Mr. Finn said to leave it to him, Mr. Ludwig. Atta girl, Elise. I'm not the one looking after your cabbages, Mr. Ludwig. You still did me a favor, didn't you? For your trouble. Ah. Didn't have to, Mr. Ludwig, but thank you. I best go tell Bertha our cabbages will be in good hands.
Probably waste, but whatever. It was free and it was two hearts I didn't have. Save over here. she is. Fuck. Fuck. For goodness sake. You and that goat of yours, Rosa Marine. Oh, Elise, there's no need to be jealous. Rosa Marine. I'm not jealous of a goat, you. <laughs> Isn't she, Flock? How would you like to sleep with him out in the granary, Rosemarine? Ah, I'd have Flock to hold close. I wouldn't be cold at all. For Why, you... Ah, Flock! Don't get so close to the edge. You be careful too, Rosemarine. You can see everything from here, can't you? I suppose. Something's on your mind, Elise, I can tell. Can't even be left a brood in peace, can I? You're going through some changes, that's all. Some changes, you say? Your path will become clearer and clearer, you'll see. I don't know about this. Not now, Rosamarine, I'm not ready. You're still overwhelmed, I see. It's difficult not to be, wouldn't you say? Why don't we head back to town, Elise? You should weave in more of the blue flowers, Linda. Didn't we leave the maypole to Freya this year? Freya clearly has better taste anyhow. I don't remember inviting you to this conversation, Lassie. Come now, Miss Wilma. Freya's not even finished with it yet. I'd say she'd be sad if you changed it without telling her, Miss Wilma. Why, I never do such a thing. I trust her judgment. I'm having her lend a hand with the wreaths, too. So you can find even more faults in her work, I see. 
I haven't asked you for a hand for a reason. It's best we keep calm. This is tiring, Rosemarine. Asking about town, you mean? No, I don't think we can count on that. I should have chosen my words a little more carefully, I suppose. That's alright, Elise. We'll find a way. It's a little too late for that, Rosemarine. If only I could turn back time and attempt it again. Either way, Elise, folks are rather restless. You haven't been asking about town yourself, have you? No, of course not. Alright, well, I'll call for you if I need you. I'll be here, Elise! Mm -hmm. Puppy. It's you! That's enough, I'm not giving you one more crumb. But you promised, you promised me some Lebkuchen. I promised you nothing, Mercy. Folks uh, already think it's strange, Elise, that you knew about the c crows since y yesterday. You know what? Why don't you go ahead? Who's to believe a scrawny little squealer like you anyhow? Old Jockin does, Elise. Miss Oddly does, too. Oh, do they? What are you telling them, then? That I saw y you talking to the crows y yesterday. There was a g golden one, too, wasn't there? Why, you... But following you uh, about town is truly so, so much fun, Elise. Uh, I just know you have the Lipkachin you promised me tucked away somewhere. All right. You keep your mouth shut, you hear? I don't want to add any more to these folks' imaginations. Why, but... But they're not uh, imagining anything, are they? Oh, shush it! Shut it, Muddy. Not one more word about this. Uh, you know. I'll c keep quiet, but uh, I was wondering. I gave you what you wanted. Go away. Uh, all right, but well, why don't you bring me some hearty soup tomorrow? With Off with you, Mandy. Eek. I suppose I'll be safer today. <laughs> <laughs> 